they get on the welfare doles. And uh, for whatever reason, you know, everybody's just tolerating this la la la, just go along with this program and let it happen. But this is the state of affairs. And it's very heart wrenching and it's, it's untenable, it's insufferable, it's unnerving. And I despise it. I absolutely despise this system. The game is rigged up one side and down the other and to the nth degree and I don't want to play. Now I do play to some degree and you know you could call me a hypocrite for playing the game at all but look I'm just as human as anybody else. I want to survive. I'd like to thrive. I'd like to get ahead. I'd like to be prosperous but you know I know already that I'm not going to be happy if this thing means, you know, if my prosperity means somebody else's poverty. And that's the state of affairs here. It's come like, it's become like an auction, okay? So it really is bad. If somebody at that auction walks in that's really well healed and they want the same items you're trying to bid on, well, you're out of luck, okay? Because they have that advantage over you. They have the money. So their good fortune is your bad fortune. That's the way it is, folks. Let's face that reality. So it's a bad thing. It doesn't matter if you're making $100,000 a year living in San Francisco, let's say, and you can't afford to be a homeowner. That's a matter of fact, because the median price for a home, even a junker, fixer-upper, is a million dollars, of which you're going to pay well over $10,000 a year just in property tax, and that's in perpetuity. So do you understand how it's bad if somebody's making 100 grand a year and they say, well, you know what, 2,000, 3,000, 1,000, whatever their rent is, they say, you know what, that's okay. I mean, I'm able to pay it, you know, and I've got extra money and I can take trips and all this. So good for them. But you see, it's bad for other people that are making half as much as them, okay, who really feel the squeeze. So you understand how other people's good financial fortune becomes other people's bad financial fortune and how this thing isn't working it, it it never will work the way it is we have unsound currency because we have unsound people at the top your currency is not supposed to go down in worth that shows anti-progress that's evidence of anti-progress that shows we're going down the tubes folks that shows there's this is a dead-end street okay and the only hope that we have is to turn it around with leadership that understands currency. Now, we could talk about decentralization a little bit. We could say, well, we're just going to take the bull by the horns in our state. You know, we're going to say, well, immigration is a big problem. We can't have people coming into California that are more moneyed and can pay, you know, like the auction thing that can pay the higher rents because they've got this great career and, and it pays a lot of numbers and, you know, and uh, so, and all this, and we can't have young, strong people come in. We got old, weak people that need jobs too, so we can't have them supplanting us. And we need the welfare for our own native sons and daughters here, so we need to seal up our borders. Metaphorically, I mean, what you do is you just take away the incentives. You say, no, we're, you can't have a new address change. You don't get a license here because you're from out of state. So looking at a microcosm, and then we could break that down, decentralization into just your own community. And that's probably what it's going to come down to, is that some community is just going to say, you know what, this is the way it is. We don't take Federal Reserve notes here. Here's the currency that we take here. This currency is sound, and it's based on our productivity, okay? It's based on our ability to supply more than we demand. And as we are able to supply more than we demand of our essential human needs, then we share that among the people and then everybody gets to take a part of that, okay? Everybody gets to share in that wealth. And so we don't have a wealth disparity growing. What we have is wealth equality, which is what you want. We're never going to be equal. Everybody's going to do something better in some way than another person. We understand that. Everybody's different. There's a whole lot of different kinds of inequality out there. But, you know, equality is written into our Constitution here in America, and it's a beautiful thing. These are equal rights, equal entitlements, because an entitlement is a right. These are God-given, and no man has a right to take them away from you. And there is a distinct correlation between rights and entitlements and obligations and duties. You understand, we have a duty to future generations because, 
you know, you got to imagine looking, you know, down the line 20 years from now at, at, you know, what we've done to this culture, our society, what it's become. You have a chance to partake in that, to be instrumental in developing the future right now by the things you stand up for, at least you speak out for, even if it's a lost cause. And, you know, then you still do it. You say, I'm on the record here and I stood up for what is right. And this is what I knew to be right. I knew that there was a way that humanity could solve all of our problems, that we could live, live together in peace and harmony, safety and security and freedom and liberty and prosperity across the board for everybody. The same things that you want for you and your families, you need to imagine other people want for them and their families. Okay, that's what I'm talking about here, folks. That's the direction I want humanity to go. And the way we're going is not that way because the New World Order bandwagon of death and destruction is careening over the edge. Okay, we've got to understand what's going on and what it's going to take to extricate ourselves from this mess, this growing mess that we're in here because it's not going to end prettily. Uh, unless really indeed there is this second return of Jesus, which a lot of people believe more and more they're starting to say it lo it's looking like that. It's Things are getting very bizarre and very strange. In fact, even this UFO incident I had recently and I talked about last week in the video, I say, you know what, this reminds me of Genesis. And uh, in those days there were these men of renown. These are These weren't regular men. These were... The Nephilim, in some cases, these giants, these were uh, other beings. Let's put it that way. And Jesus said that in the latter days, before the end of the age, not the end of the world, the end of the age before his return, that it would be just like in the days of Noah. So if you look at chapter 6 of the book of Genesis, you'll see what it was like. And one of the things that... Uh, one of the, one of the things it was like was was that there was these alien beings that were coming and interacting and visiting on the earth and whether they're approved from God or not I mean look he's allowing them to exist God can destroy anybody he could take the life away from any any flora or fauna at any time he wants so we've got to understand that that God has that ability he's the giver of all life and rightfully he can be the taker just like I said he, he's compared God to the potter so if he decides to smash up the potter and recycle it and use it again in some other purpose he has full right to do that because he's the sovereign it's all his you know the universe belongs to the Creator God Almighty and all that is contained therein. That includes all the galaxies, all the solar systems, all the habitable planets out there, including our planet, all the nations, all the states, all the cities, all the homes, all the individuals, all the individuals' possessions, everything. God owns everything bar nothing. So every thought that's ever come to your head was either a good thought or a bad thought. If it was a good thought, just remember who to thank. God above gave you a good thought so that you would do good. You would think good thoughts and you would share good thoughts with others through the things you say, through the things you do. And then, you know, his will would be being accomplished through you as an individual. That's what we've got to understand here is that God is working through human beings to his purposes. You know, this is all happening so that his will will eventually be established on earth. But we have to get to that point where we're just, all of us together are just beside ourselves with, with hopelessness of some sort, where we're just so, you know, pathetic and pitiable that we just say, God, you know what, I hate it. I hate the system. I cannot stand it. I don't hate a living being. I just hate the establishment. I hate the system. I hate having to play in a rigged game. Help us here, all of us together. We have to reach that point. And he finds a way to make sure we do. It is written that in our, in, in our weaknesses, his strength is perfected. You see, 
by us becoming broken in spirit to some degree and to become disheartened and to admit that we're pathetic and pitiable, then we have a chance to, to listen to the still, small, gentle voice of the Holy Spirit of truth, the Spirit of God coming to us and talking to us and saying, look, this is what you need to do. This is what you need to think about. These are the things you need to say and get out there, get active, and, 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 and talk it up. But do it in a way that's a, in a peacemaking way. You're not here to be a troublemaker. It's not about you being right and being proud and having a big ego. This is about saying, look, God is right. He's truthful. He's the one we can trust. Let's see what he says. He's always logical. Everything that is written in Scripture makes sense, okay? And God's character and nature and personality is not hidden. He doesn't want to hide it. He wants us to know it so that we can learn to be like Him, learn to become perfect, as perfect as we can, to become ideal, okay? That's what's written. He said, be ye perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect, which translates to be ye idealistic as your Father in heaven is idealistic. So if there's a problem that's bugging you, that's okay. Look at it squarely and decide what you want to do with it. You know, in the long run, eventually, will it be gone? In your idea of a perfect world, not just for you, not just for some, but for everybody, are those problems going to be persistent or will they be gone? Will they be vanquished? I suggest they will be gone. They will be vanquished at the hand of God. But remember, the hand of God is working through us as individuals to enlighten people, to inform people, to edify people. This is what it's all about, to instruct and help people to understand, to become a peacemaker, to say, look, I absolutely know I'm right about this subject. I absolutely know this person's wrong, but they're utterly convinced that they're right and that I'm wrong, and they're mean. They're intimidating. What's the next step of intimidation is terrorizing. That's what it is. So people have a right to say what they believe, but say it in a way, look, I'm trying to convince you to jump sides, come to my way of believing, my way of thinking. So you, it becomes a discussion, discourse, you know, and civil discourse. This is where, you know, people have to work together here. I mean, there's so many people with the political uh, you know, the thing going on right now. I know that Alex Jones is up in Portland, Oregon, right? Or he's got, not him, but he's got some of his reporters up there because the Portland uh, University uh, had a problem with a few of the students wanting to, uh, you know, uh, have their own little Trump rally. And then they got invaded by the anti-Trump people and they just shut them down. They don't want them to talk about it. They don't want it in there. They say, you know what? We're controlling this university and we're going to shut down your speech. We don't give us on American stuff. You know, America, it should just, it shouldn't be America. It should just be another communist nation. Now it, it should be, uh, disbanded. Okay. They don't understand the issues. I mean, if these people, all these people that hate Donald Trump, if they have specific issues, let's talk about that. What's your beef? What, what are your demands? What do you want to see from the next president? They don't understand basic things, politics and economics. These things go together like a hand in glove. That's what it's all about. The money. All we have is a bunch of sycophants at the very top. These black hats at, at the top are the money printing class. And then the other ones just cleave to them. They brown nose and they just want to stay close to them. They say, this is where my way of out of fear is. This is what makes me feel good to be financially secure. I just want money. Lots of it. More and more of it. Just so my numbers are going up, man. I don't care how much you guys destroy the currency through market manipulation and price fixing, price rigging. All this collusion that's taking place. All these special interest groups. So you understand that, you know, people have things to say, but you've got to listen to learn. You know, but how do you make somebody listen? You can't. You can't, but you can't stop people from talking, although we've got people trying to stop people from talking. We've got to talk about all the sundry special interest groups out there that have benefited from the market manipulation, from the price rigging and the price fixing out there. And the most pernicious special interest group of all is the governmental one, okay? Why are they the worst? Even though they may not take the largest chunk of your money, they may not be the source of the largest burden, what they're doing, though, is they are the ones responsible 
responsible for validating and legitimizing the theft through private interests, like your landlord, like the mortgage holder, the bankers, okay? These are private interest groups, the real estate companies, all these property management companies, the flippers and the speculators out there. All these people are special interest groups. That's why I talk about the Chamber of Commerce and I say, well, this is the Chamber of Communists. I mean, that's why there's so many people that, you know, they think immigration is just, you know, it's the best thing since sliced bread and you're just a big meanie if you don't want everybody in the world to immigrate to America. No, I personally don't care if the whole world wants to immigrate to America. I'm 